Especially not with the Tonight, and a good Adam climbs a mast. The boat climbs a beach. And Danny flies all the way from the UK to catch a fish. Okay, so going back about a year, and summing this up really quick, I bought this boat for a dollar. It had sank during Hurricane Dorian and was in need of major cleaning and repair. After some hard time spent in the Bahamas, working on the boat by myself, we finally have a crew assembled and we're ready to tackle the larger projects. Launch the flares. Send Island the life is not always what they say it's going to be. It presents many challenges which you have to face on a daily basis. After a tough week of trying to get a hold of this one piece of equipment, we finally got our hands on it and began cleaning the boat in preparation for the arrival of a few more of our friends. Oh, it's already got a name. She's called Molly. We'll call her MDMA. Cause she knows how to get the party started. <laughs> Obla D came with a really nice condition AB Inflatables Ventus dinghy, which is a nine foot six inflatable with a dual V-shaped fiberglass hull. Using the main halyard and a winch, it was pretty easy to launch the dinghy. Even though some of our lines were tangled at the top of the mast, making it a little difficult to raise and lower. Since this was our first time inflating the dinghy, we wanted to drop it in the water and make sure that it didn't have any leaks. These boats are really well made. They feature things like davit lifting points, a dual reinforced fiberglass hull, and even a driver's seat with some storage She's space underneath. A champagne bottle for her, uh, for christening. You're gonna have to help her over the edge, I think. Uh, well, uh, make sure she didn't get caught on that uh, piece back there. Flashdown of the uh, HMS Molly. I'm so happy. Today's challenge <laughs> is to get this <laughs> over that spreader arm at a fucking 20 degree angle. All right, we're going. We're thinking the best method. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> not for the camera after 50 attempts. <laughs> oh my god. All right, let's see if we can grab the monkey ball from this side. Since this boat was storm damaged, there are quite a few things on board that are not quite up to par. Don't grab the wrong side. Oh, Most of the lines the and halyards are a complete tangled mess at the top of the mast. There. Uh, champion! We were trying our best by using a makeshift gaff hook attached to a broom handle, attached to a painter's handle, to try and untangle the lines from around the stays. It was not going as planned. <laughs> One thing after another. There it is, there it is. You a professional apple picker? Like what, what is this? Conker, conker picker. Conker picker. <laughs> All we're trying to do is get this line on the other side of that cable. Monkey bowl. All right, we're almost out of monkey ball to ball with. New problems. Take the monkey ball off. Right, just pull it 
on the ball? Is that what's going on? Oh, fuck me. See that dangly end? We gotta get that down. We can't. If that goes through that eyelid, we're fucked. We to climb up there and get it. There we go. This expert hooker <laughs> is trying to stab his hook into that, look, into that line there. Oh, is that it? No, that's not it. Oh, yeah, baby. Look at that. Oh, the day's work. Wow. All right. Let's tie that off to one of these black cleats. And we'll do the same again for the monkey ball. Because now we just need the monkey ball back on that side of the spreader. Oh, God. Try to go lift it over. You just gotta do it the hard way. Because of the damage to the bowsprit, there's not currently a force stay holding the mast in place. But with the tangle of halyards getting increasingly worse, it was time to climb to the top and sort it out by hand. Like going all the way up. Especially not with it like secured and having good lines. Looks like I got the best. Do you get to kick back? Take it easy. Using a bosun's chair and Threshy's assistance on a main halyard, I climbed the mast and I found the problem we were dealing with. The halyard had wedged itself between the bracket for the spreader arm and was stuck on a cotter pin. Since I was halfway up the mast, we went ahead and untangled the rest of the lines that we could get our hands on. That's what I was worried about. Might just have to chop it. With the mast untangled and the deck finally clear, Obla D was starting to look less like a wreck and a little bit more like a boat. Hey, cheese something. Hey, so far, it's been a lot of hard work and a lot of hours. But we've got the feeling that the hard work is starting to pay off. Captain Woody and I have been longtime sailing partners aboard his boat, Sailing Scintilla. In 2018, we invited Danny, Neil, and Scott out to the Bahamas for their first island adventure. Sailing from Miami, Florida to Grand Bahama, we stopped at a couple of different places along the way. The famous Sapona shipwreck was a concrete container ship built in the 1920s, which sank off of the island of Bimini in 1924. The ship's concrete construction was unique for the time because it was cheap and incredibly fast to build. Swimming through its open hull and engine room, you can find a number of aquatic life that have made a home inside of the wreck. And our favorite part of the trip was swimming with a pot of dolphins that had been following the boat from island to island. Swimming with the dolphins was such an amazing experience. The dolphins would come right up to you and mimic your movements. If you spun in the water, they'd spin in the water. If you dove, they would follow you. If you followed them, they'd lead you back to where you started. They are amazing animals who are vital to the ecosystem and need to be protected at all costs.
With the tide on its way back up, it was important that we got to work quickly and moved her out to a deeper spot in the water. I think we need to bring about 10 meters of that chain. Yeah, we we're floating. Yeah, we're still floating. floating. So I'm gonna start driving us, driving us forward though. Our friend Gary had let us use his Stapleton for the day, which is a 300 horsepower center council. The Stapleton has more than enough power to drag Obladi wherever she needs to go. And with the calm winds and still waters, it would be a fairly straightforward task. Our first job, however, was to pull in the 300 feet of heavy grade anchor chain. After that, we would have to pull the anchor up by hand since the windlass is currently not That's functioning. Heavy. That's fucking heavy. She'll come straight up from there. Come on. She's out of the ground anyway. It's just that plow is. But I see what you mean. Like, yeah, if, if we pull on it, we're good. The cove we were anchored in is good protection for a shallow draft boat, like a catamaran. But with over seven feet of draft, Obladi needs a little bit more water to swim in. Look at the dolphin here. Oh yeah, there he is. Look at this. That's a good sign. Hey buddy. Good. Once we had the anchor reset and Obladi in a deeper part of the cove, we set off to do a little bit of fishing and explore the island. We've been out here 45 seconds. This guy battling. There we go, she's there. Oh, stick. Oh, she's just a little guy. Look at this. <laughs> ah. That's your first catch of the day. As if that can catch, uh, what, what, what are we doing, what knots? 20. 20. As if that little guy can go 20 knots. Didn't take long. Choppers. Fish in that, in that there, can you do with um, some forceps, mate? Obladi's anchor rides on a bridle system, which means that it uses a length of rope on either side of the ship to triangulate the anchor chain down near the waterline. What this does is help to absorb shock as the bow of the ship rides in waves. Because of the shifting winds, tides, and seas, our bridle system had become a little bit tangled. And since we don't have power to our windlass, this means I had to dive under the boat, remove the bridle by hand, reset the bridle and chain using stainless steel shackles and safety wire on the pins to keep the pins from working themselves out in rough weather. 
Once the bridle was secure, all the chain and bridle had to be let back out and the boat repositioned with the anchor set to be sure that it could withstand any change in currents. The previous owners had fitted Obladi's heads with Electrosan waste removal products. These are nice units, but water damage had rendered them inoperable and irreparable, and to replace them is incredibly expensive. For now, we'll replace the macerators with new units so we can have functioning toilets on board. Most of the wiring below the water line was damaged and needs to be replaced. So for now, we're running temporary lights, which are just LED string lights from Amazon. These can be had for about 25 bucks a set. Don't use much power. Well, we got some couch and can be run off of a on. small inverter. Yes, new, Most new of these are 12 pressure. volts, so if you're handy with a soldering iron, you can probably shred the power pack and plug them into some batteries uh, and save yourself the of power battery. waste of an inverter itself. We had decided to order foam from Amazon to make some temporary cushions until some official cushions could be constructed for the boat. Danny, Thresha, and myself set to work fitting the cushions we had and trimming them to fit all the seats and beds on board. Where's that bungee? Why didn't you? Look at that one. Oh, it just fits on it. Fucking nuts, it's here. We said that, didn't we? What? Yeah, you need an extra, what, 12 inch over there, right? Oh, but did we measured this. Did we measure this we measured when it pulled out? Different, didn't we? we measured it when it pulled out. Remember? Did, did you see this magic? Stand aside. What, wait, what's that measure? 24. 24. That's hung fire, then might have to do your room first. Might. Has he seen this? Yeah, pulls out. Yeah. No, but you're expecting me to pull chicks. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't want it like that though, do I really? No, it's up to you. Like what? Pull out. Pulled out? No, you're just going well, to you need never going to pull it out. You need to make like a backrest, you know? It's enough for me and my skinny little chicks there. <laughs> That's it. What I need to do then is cut that back a bit and make that into a decent, you know, whatever I save off that, I'll make it into another pillow. I? I don't want a, a, a tiny shit bit there, do I? You know that bit? No. Because we're gonna have to wrap everything single. Yeah. Could do it cutting it like uh doing Adams first. See what's left. Mm-hmm. Cut offs. And then Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, leave that there then for now. Let's go and let's see what we're probably gonna have to do yours first then. Get that though, that is sweet as fuck. Well. Right. There's a lot left to do on board, from plumbing and electrical, to deck repairs, an engine swap, and even raising a new mast. We look forward to the work ahead and the challenges that life on the ocean brings us. video and leave a comment below. We'd like to hear from you.